Hey guys, Doug here from Motion. Today we're talking about our stainless steel steam vent kit. It is a four port coolant crossover system for the LS engines and works with the Gen 3 and Gen 4 LS engines. That's the LS 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7. And then we have separate systems for A and 9. Uh, this will work on 4 8s, 5 3s, 6 0s. And uh, we designed it to be as universal as possible. It also only works with a specific amount of intake. So if you have a question on what it works with, check out our listing. It's in the description below. We are adding new intakes all the time, but generally it fits with a high rise style intake, like a single plane, uh, an Edelbrock Pro Flow, a Holly High Ram, a Frankenstein intake, and a whole variety of others. The main thing is it doesn't work with any of the plastic intakes. They sit too low. As you can see, um, there's some room used up underneath that. You can't fit your hand underneath of a plastic intake. So it needs to be the correct intake. So make sure you check that out ahead of time. As I mentioned, this is a super popular uh, way to connect all four ports of your cooling system, which is important in safety and durability. And uh, we give you some different options to run their center port to the radiator. So let's dive right in and check out what's included in this kit and uh, get to assembling it. So when you get a uh, stainless steel steam kit from us, what you'll find in the box is uh, everything is packaged. And this, we do this so that we see and know everything is there when it leaves. If you look on the um, lines, you'll see that they are actually labeled by where they go. So if you get this kit, don't um, unpackage it and cut those labels off. You'll need them to know where everything goes when you install it. You'll also see that we include these, uh, these little gaskets. This is how it seals to the cylinder head surface. We don't use O-rings. We designed this on purpose so that it uses a uh, factory style gasket. That way you guys can go to O'Reilly's or AutoZone if you ever have one missing or tear it or whatever. We didn't want it to be some specific O-ring that you can't get locally. Um, this part number, Dorman 56390, is a uh, part number, like I said, you can find at any O'Reilly's, any AutoZone. You can also use the GM ones. These ones work really well and they're very inexpensive. So you're not really held hostage to calling us and getting replacements. So in this package, you will see all of the different components. Uh, you have a center block. This is a block that has five ports on it. Uh, four coming in from the engine and one going back out. You'll find the corner blocks um, and the hardware for them as well. And then you'll find five steam tubes, four coming from the engine and then this one uh, coming out, and I'll talk more about that here in a minute, and then as well as the fittings that screw into it. These are NPT by AN fittings, and again, I'll get more into that here in a little bit, but you can see it's all laid out nicely and uh, easy to understand, and uh, next thing we'll do is cut it out and start installing it. So before we dig into installing all of this, uh, I wanted to show you guys a couple of the fittings. These are what screw into the corner block. You'll notice it has a, uh, AN, 4AN side on one side, and then a NPT thread on the other side. So we get a lot of phone calls. If you're new to uh, building cars or plumbing or any of that stuff, uh, two things. This side doesn't, the AN side never gets Teflon or pipe dope or anything. This side does to seal. So if you put this in um, without putting thread tape or some type of a pipe dope on it, uh, it's gonna leak most likely. So. If you aren't familiar or if you've never seen this trick, I have a buddy that's a, a plumber and I've done so much stuff with NPT and I always kind of struggled or at least didn't know the tips to uh, doing this correctly. Um, if you have the fitting facing away from you and you, uh, you always want to have your tape coming from the bottom side of uh, the roll, if you have the, that facing away from you, you just start it and then you turn the fitting clockwise. So. You don't need tons of tape. You don't need to wrap it 15 times. And you definitely, when you're taping, don't want it to hang over the edges because what that'll do is actually when the tape gets brittle or breaks off, it'll go through and clog stuff up. So you want to have it up far enough to where it doesn't um, get down in there. I like to wrap mine nice and uniform-like so that um, when you go to actually install it, everything's square and looks concentric and even. Um, but wrapping it like that ensures that when you turn it into the block, uh, because we wrapped it in that fashion, it is actually never gonna catch an edge and try to unravel it. If you wrap it the other way around, it'll actually unravel the tape as you go, uh, pretty much defeating the purpose. And then gives you a huge uh, 
chance of making frag putting fragments and pieces of the Teflon into the system. A lot of people like pipe dope. A lot of people say don't ever use Teflon tape. I still like it. It's less messy. On something like this, it works great, especially if you follow these tips. So the first step that we are going to do on our mock-up motor as we're installing this is to put the corner blocks on. These are our foundation for this. We machine these in-house and then anodize them. Um, as I mentioned before, you get these gaskets at no extra cost with the system. And uh, the way they work is they um, just slide right over this. You'll see there's a rubber piece and then it face seals. Uh, this is important to note because if you have LS3 heads or Gen 4 style heads, a lot of times there's plugs in the back of these heads. Um, now if the heads are on the car, you can use a left-handed drill to pull them out and people are always worried about the inside port on um, that damaging it. It, feel, it actually seals off the face of this gasket. So if you, uh, you don't wanna get crazy and you definitely don't want to damage it if you can avoid it because you don't want chips inside of the engine but if uh if at any cost just keep the face of it very nice um if the heads are off you can just go ahead and take a punch and tap them out they're just like a little uh rivet plug type of deal that seals things up so i get that call a lot people are asking i have a gen 4 or ls3 head the back ports are plugged off uh, left-handed drill bit or a regular drill bit you can drill them out if you're very careful use a vacuum Otherwise, uh, tap them out with a hammer and a punch from the bottom side, and they'll just pop right out. So these will just uh, install right on here, and it uh, comes with supplied hardware that screws down. That's all you have to do for seal. So I'll go ahead and install all of the rest of these quick. Um, you don't have to get crazy with torque on that. That's why we send the button heads, because we don't want you guys to strip those out by trying to torque them. Um, I typically do it by feel, it's just that simple. So we'll just go ahead and install the rest of these and move on. So we're gonna go ahead and start trying to mock up the tube lines. As you can see on these lines, why I told you not to uh, take the sticker off, they're, they are marked. This one uh, says passenger front. What I like to do at this point is just start laying the lines out where they need to go, driver front right here, and so on. One is driver's rear. Now that we have our lines laid out in the proper order and placement, uh, I'll just touch back on the fact that you'll want these fittings to be basically close to tight, but loose enough um, or able to turn them in the last little bit so that you can align the fitting angle to the angle that the tube is coming out. So. Um, you know, depending on which corner it is, just make sure it's tight with enough room to come for, far enough uh, to kind of hit exactly how you want it. That's key to making this a quick and easy install. If you do that right off the bat, you're gonna make your life really easy. So <clears throat> with that being said, the next thing I like to do, I like to go ahead and start tightening these into place. As I mentioned earlier, you can use a 7 16 wrench um, and then you'll also probably want an AN wrench handy. But what I would like to do is basically connect these tubes. Um, you'll see this one isn't perfect, but we know that our tubes are gonna go straight with the valley cover. So after we get this started on here, um, we're gonna, for illustrative purposes, we're leaving this loose right now. Um, but since this will already be tight, you'll just use your wrench and just pull it into straight. Um, or tighten it into straight, I guess. Same with this one. We're gonna go ahead and, uh, of course, like I said before, this these fittings are already gonna be pretty tight. And then all you're gonna do is, um, once you get, these are gonna be basically level with uh, this area here. So get that kind of snug and then just kind of tweak it into place, into uh, parallel, if you will. Um, as you see, these two will have to come in a straight line of each other. And if that's tight, that's gonna be a good start to what you're doing. The hardest part is getting the angle of these to be correct. So if we kind of use that trick where we put it on ahead of time and then tighten it into uh, parallel with this line right here, uh, things go real smooth and easy. So I'll go ahead and do the same thing on the back ports here. And again, these don't have to be super tight here. They can be loose, that way you can wiggle them a little bit. And uh, we'll do our last one here, our driver's rear. Go 
kind of pull that one into place. And so now the only trick is just to kind of push your tube nuts back. Um, I'll go ahead and start with the front ones here. And this whole kit is held up by the tension of the uh, actual nuts that you're using. So if you get things close, it's probably a good idea to start tightening some of these nuts down. We get a lot of questions on these steel uh, 90s that we use in this kit. And the reason why we use the steel versus uh, using aluminum, which wouldn't be a big deal for us to use, is that these lines here are stainless steel. So if we were to make uh, these 90 degree fittings aluminum and these steel, as you go to tighten them once, you might gall up or kind of dig into the aluminum and uh, you might not be able to take it apart and put it back together without it leaking. So we basically do it for uh, just a more durable setup. And since everything's already gonna be steel versus black, it kind of goes with the same theme. And uh, you know, if it was all black and those were the only things uh, steel, it might be one thing, but since they're not. And as you can see, the middle port there, you can understand why I say go ahead and turn this in ahead of time. You can obviously use a socket to tighten it from here. Uh, just make sure you hold on this and you're not torquing real bad. The other thing is uh, before you start tightening things down too much, you wanna go ahead and make sure this is nice and level. You have some adjustment still with everything. Um, and then just you know hold that center block and go around and tighten your fitting. As you start, start to tighten these, um, the whole thing gets pretty rock solid. And uh, another question that we get when we are building these or when people are looking to buy one is can I run this with knock sensors? Yeah, you can see my hand fits under there. The knock sensors only stick up about that far. So it's definitely a good place to run wiring, hoses, if you will. Uh, if you've seen our regulator brackets that sit right here on the front, you can run the return hose underneath there. Um, it's a good place to hide stuff. If you're not sure about the compatibility of this system with your intake, definitely take a look at our listing on our website. We have a, uh, a decently complete um, amount of intakes, but there's so many intakes on the market that um, there might be some new ones. As you can see, my little trick as far as uh, swinging all these into parallel really makes things nice and square, uniform, um, and very easy. If you try to do it any other way, it can get kind of tricky. So we have a nice setup here and uh, we're pretty much done. Basically, the next step, we are either going to hook up our um, hard line into here. This is if you're running a rubber line. Um, it's designed to go out the passenger side because that's typically where the caps and also the uh, port for the radiator are on this side. That's why we run them that direction. And uh, if not, you can go ahead and pull this off and run your uh, number four AN line, which is a proper size directly to this from your radiator. So guys, I hope that really cleared things up and made it uh, look as easy as we have found it to be after we've discovered these tips and tricks. We love this system. If you don't have a intake to clear this, like I said, check out our uh, website. I'll put the link below for this and everything else that goes with it. And then I'll also put a link for our DIY kit uh, we have a V2 kit that will clear LS1, 6, and 3 intake manifold, the plastic one, the factory one. We have a DIY kit and we have an LSA, LS9 supercharger kit for those uh, supercharged factory applications. Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope this made it easy. We will see you guys next time.